Well, it's been a great experience coming to Ottawa today. I've had a very warm welcome. And then uh, tea and cake and dinner and <laughs> and now here, so it's been great. Um, yeah, so I've never read in Ottawa, so I thought I would just read one or two things from um, each book and just make my way up to the present. So, um, yeah. This poem is called Shift. Have I got the right uh, poem? Okay. Shift. It was beyond a little east, so brightly moonlight of blossom. This shadow offering evergreen between leaf and needle, the hollow, lowing mossy with crocus. Spicy and moist exultation. Meridian red star toward the west, Toward the west, only further south, fugitive rays, a tall flame. There were eyes here. Twilight, they smiled upon broken step, all round pale and dipper. Silver lifting soft dialogue, ancestor to express from lungs the open question. Spring, a new station, smoothing but a mild reflection, the early rains, lukewarm darkness and the clarity for thirst, down to the little to drink. This is the tale in person, in a group of trees, from what heaven or cloud was entangled, then released, bow and quivering. It is here to tell of the seed with other events, the beginning and not the end, for spirit safety's an elegant drone, warm and whatsoever, with peacock feathers. If one speaks of retaining the flavor as sporting the dim and wise, only now and again craved for eating by the blazing fire, one lies softer. Strengthened in monosyllables before the complicated nature of the whole, not so easily answered. The balance, a larger and more significant footstep, walking damp and expectant when the hour is come. I know not the day, I know not which or shall, the field with seeing hands to all within. A great errand of cedar and sycamore, Filigree through the text, a natural hollow for refuge and lookout, this road so differently placed. The well articulates gold and opal embroidered with laughter, a hole well lined and known to throw itself broad as daylight into garlands of instinct, above the open country. Roots in soil of dream, branch and shoot, leave time and life to themselves the abiding present. And for increase draw sap in crowning the hilltop late afternoon. Distant ranges conspicuous, no screening to shroud, primateria, whisper, wisteria, charmed and crossed over, widening into view. The story goes on to tell the lie of the land, laws of beauty formalized upon a body awakening, smiling to boot, a lower lip running from corners, and this line fastened behind the ear, own underneath. All sorts together with five and seven, four and three, the harmony, precisely, the horizon multiple. Deja, deja vu. In this wonderland of doubled vision, everything can only stammer, tossed from hand to hand to hindsight and extraordinary talent, where escape isn't a dream and where virtually every tradition is based on absence, a continuing first take, evoking images 
it's not clear, but in any case wondering if it might be the fragile edge along these margins that run raw and restricted, and which then slowly dissolve into the rough idea or subvert a symmetry, however profound. For reality tropics, even the skeptic, with proof enough, a few sun-warmed berries, and a discreet elegance besides. Inventory. Eight sky scenes improvise an evolution of soothing. Geometry awash in yellows, oranges, purples, and blues suggest a blue field unfolding nervously inside a room of creamy whites. Two icons on the two big lawn amplify and separate. They're complex of lopsided shutters balanced by an undulating wave. Your eyes, your hands, initially perceived as a refuge, extend like smaller squares into the storm of paneled doors. A line of black and white dots, the landscape. This place acts as a skylight. These floors channel the ceiling, the right angles ooh and ah. Private indulgence in the midst of their vernacular, their abiding and formative spectrum perched with unsentimental directness, even cubist, the tidal wave splash of red spilling sassafras onto the checkerboard. This succession of S's ascending as though magically twisted or wrought iron from long ago had made a comeback, only to serve as an end table in this palatial hut. something to visit <laughs> older pieces like yeah okay. mm -hmm. rarity escapes not being a child but being sprightly although descending the not yet still scarce yellow still gingerly across the tall and rickety town and stars a thoroughfare of striped partitions attract now the stormy compound open to the not yet lit. No litany of off less likely to settle for some dimly inscribed, is it ornament? Yes, above a month of tides and traveling, necessity of this. Hence the curtain's flirtations compelled by degrees by declaring henceforth and sometimes the mystery of an untidy room speaks for and of. For anything in a warm cloak shall humor the house with no doors. Tenuous groupings of structural detail, ornate insets, no slamming. Didn't we speak of necessity with regret by means and justly? Not from forgetfulness, but for whom flowed from, becoming more comprehensible like hard and currency with little or no hope of. And yet they participate those circles of light, their fledgling ways a kind of surprised affection, others on the other lost hand. Can we blame them, those images of clay, as if difference inferred a fact of single elements, Plucked early they mingle, buoyant the other ear bare. Vistas of distant parts, stars. But mobility, flesh, and imagination astonish us, engender carnival and sparkles inside and out this oh so decibel, oh so fluttering every so hour, day after day for the sake of the colony. As for thin air, well, equals. Each and every acquaint themselves, the mysterious tribe, convoluted scenario. In places a small map imitates the press and caress of an otherwise obscure spot, evenness of its surface. Everything with otherwise from which to choose, a table in a field of rain, 
in a field after the rain. The morning after, the disproportionate dream implies a certain logic. Each in every increment initiates a drop of liquid slightly displaced. Silhouette of an airborne armchair, the onset of shade coinciding with, with the arrival of clouds, for, in passing. Each and every acquaint themselves, infectious laughter, its agents and apostles. Unified by their reference and spatial link, the variant provides an otherwise misplaced modifier, most salient and timely. Everything so happens in the open air, aerial view, clouds escaping. Into the bright blue present, the presence of magenta cones confounds the bluest of days. Every cone tip suspends a single drop of liquid. Like belief, the epic of how coincides accordingly with neither the sky in question nor the shepherd yonder. Each and every acquaint themselves the mystery of this an issue of seasons. What this might mean might willingly forego an otherwise sullen or sudden epiphany. Every step taken proceeds accordingly. What is Heather's name? What in heaven's name remains a reservoir or singular blueprint ever so slightly displaced? Each and every fabulous in so doing ripples a peculiar logic. We be will we beside a stone pool giggling the way we will be thus in the morning. Each and every reacquaint themselves. What steps to be taken, the guise a hollow. A chain of former obsessions heightens the contrast between swollen and stolen. Wouldn't have it otherwise. Wouldn't this thus marvel neither more nor less, or follow inflections inflow and outflow, now full, now empty, its links beget a semblance of eddies and windows, each ring-like pattern a lingering theft with which we conspire accordingly. Some troubling surge, the sky a swell to which the water adheres, unsettling as Nebula says. I read a few pieces from um, this way. <laughs> the influence of complete darkness. In the dusk of a November evening, somewhere in the mid-17th century, nothing is concealed or conveyed. There is simply a concentration of sunflowers. As the world turns, they turn, from pathos to persuasion, guided by the radiant light. Two fresh puddles insert themselves and are red as a dark ellipse. Nothing hinders them from soaking through. Perhaps a fish detects them before disappearing, its far-off murmur a mutter now, sounding something like the inscription on a Japanese fan by Totoki by Guy. Outside the city walls, there's an odd fish. I don't know its name. Perish the thought. Alas, there is always the temptation to think of what we speak, to reconfigure the haphazard assembly into self-standing objects, enhanced so cleverly to halt, then hasten us into the neighborhood of a pine tree. What real flowers flock there, are flocking there so close to the ground? We speak of what's given, a calling, climate and soil, crisp and delicate fretwork keeping vigilant watch along the frontiers. Yet this is what happens. 
And when it does, we tend to think that if we keep repeating loudly, in spite of the precarious wobble, that all will be well, decipherment easy. In a sense, this is written deliberately. The leaves our senses urge, unfurling to rustle, to swallow and stand one's ground once shaking the tree. We can relax then and credit the material witness who has come back, from where? As if in a daze, knowing when to bow and when to beckon, then dying shortly after learning to say cup. Choice. Enter poverty, enter beds of soil and something unusual living in the neighbor's tree. Enter a notion of present and future, the way it continues to turn one's head and scatter this waking of birds. Now enter the guests, sometimes feathered, always restless, 30 feet or more above the ground with name tags that suggest some correspondence with the space around the tree. Include the island, isolated peninsulas, cliffs, and swallows. Enter the few noteworthy exceptions, such as luck and youth and a pastel-colored carriage yawning in the pensive street. Enter the stranger and something strange, like an ideal morning, or a doppelganger, or two. Enter erudite and leave hopelessly lost. Enter the willing, the ever-enlarging circle, and the book with the chapter on growth that rings. Enter inter alia, never the, nevertheless the very notion among them. Enter unannounced, welcome, and long overdue. Enter loud and persistent, dragging a wing, and hum. I think I'll end with this poem, uh, Telltale Signs. Church bells in the middle of the night, superimposed and attending the wee hours of morning. One red and one green. Long descriptions accompanied by longer silences. If or when, from whom or from what they are retreating. When things in simulacrum are equal and scary. When almost every other faith lasts longer than the nodding hidden in us. When a detour is the longest point between two distances and everything else is peripheral. If it happens suddenly, when it is uncannily accurate and then you inherit it, if it glows. Because it has a memory and seems to enjoy talking. When it isn't a depiction but an embodiment and strikes a low chord twice when it strikes. When there is only one risk at a time, it inevitably blocks the view. One wonders if you had to be there, straddling the river, while everything on the opposite bank hangs upside down. If, when looking back, one is turned to stone. If, in other words, you pick it up. If it looks harmless but leaves you ready to hate what is to come. When the patterns reveal something moments before entering the sanctuary, when it is inexorable and inedible, if it becomes enshrined, if, above all, it isn't waiting here at the furthest reaches, if only, she says softly, facing the flat land, if otherness is filtering through. Thank you.